Welcome to Real Estate in Real Time. I'm your host, Woody Zimmerman, here with Mark Skabowski of Remax Lakes, and welcome to the show. Here we are. Good morning. Good morning. And you brought over some really interesting stats on buying and selling during a pandemic. Yeah, it's it, kind of interesting. So National Association of Realtors, you know, they do studies, nationwide studies, uh, quite often. With the pandemic, they are they're digging deep into, you know, what trends have developed for both buyers and sellers, yep. you know, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. And, you okay. know, some, or I shouldn't say post, yeah. I guess we're still in it. Yeah, we're still so in it's it. not over yet. Yeah. But And for those who are on the radio, we have some cool cool charts. Yeah, we do. Isn't yeah. that great? Yeah, you can really see them. But <laughs> we'll try and break some of that uh, info down uh, for you. But I guess the number one trend for buyers is multi-generational homes mm -hmm. have grown in popularity. Now, if you think about it, that was start. We were starting to see that trend, anyways. Okay. As um, you know, the baby boomers come of age. Right. Uh, you know, there was a trend towards downsizing, mm -hmm. and part of that was moving in with their kids. So we saw, even in locally. So this is national stuff, but locally, we saw more people looking for. Well, does it have? You know, this isn't politically correct, but a mother-in-law suite, mm -hmm. right, or a father-in-law suite, or a something or other in-law sweet whatever it is the political correct term today but they were looking for the opportunity to have room in the house for parents to right. stay with them mm -hmm. um, and it's continued during the pandemic okay. so uh, percentage wise uh, there was a significant percentage 15 percent more than the 11 percent so it's a four percent increase in people that were looking for multi-generational homes well you, you know that's it's, it's interesting because you talked a couple of weeks ago because i never even thought about this more people are looking for a bigger house because of now that they're working from home right you know we feel like this is going to stay i mean that seems like the trend is is that a lot of people are going to work out of the house and so they're looking for like maybe a four bedroom home because they want to use one of those bedrooms as an office yeah absolutely and so then, then you've got, you know, if, if mother-in-law is coming to live with you right. as well, right. now, now you might be looking for a five-bedroom. You, you I mean, need a five-bedroom house or you need a basement. You need space something. Yeah, or you need an space. outbuilding that you can create the cave, right. you know, for somebody to go and, and work home office or whatever out there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and again, just trying to contrast what's happening nationally versus what's happening here locally. And in this case, we're mirroring that trend. Mm -hmm. We're seeing some of that same thing. Okay. Um, homes are pricier, uh, you know, and anybody that listens to the show regularly knows we've talked about how hot the market is. You know, we did our market update not too long ago, you yeah. know, at the end of every month, uh, talked about how home prices in, have increased year over year. Yeah. Well, nationally, that is true. Mm -hmm. um, I won't use the numbers that they do because they're not in our realm. Right. Um, the average numbers are pretty you know, the average price nationwide is significantly higher than our average well, price. Yeah, Northern Indiana is a very affordable place to live. So Absolutely one an affordable of, one place. Of, one, one of the most affordable places. Yeah, it, yeah. it is. But the trend is continuing. You know, prices are increasing. And, you know, you've heard me say it before. We cannot continue, you know, 6 and 7% year-over-year price appreciation. Right. Because wages aren't following. Mm -hmm. You know, at some point, people are not going to be able to buy. And, and the market's beginning to adjust. You know, as we've talked, uh, days on market's starting to increase. It says that inventory's starting to build a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm not saying, you know, that, oh, things are out there for six months. But um, we're starting to see a little bit of a slowdown. Uh, and that will also slow as far as price appreciation goes. Okay. So, but nationwide prices are, are have increased dramatically. People are planning to live in houses for a shorter period of time. Now, this really makes zero sense to me. Again, mm -hmm. this is out of the, the national trend. Why would I overpay for a house that I was going to be in for a shorter period of time? Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense to to mark the accountant, you know, mark the business guy. It truly doesn't. Right. But according to the national statistics. People are buying properties and staying. Maybe it's because they're coming out or planning to stay a shorter period of time. Maybe it's because they were throwing money away on rent. Mm -hmm. So instead of renting, they've decided, hey, maybe I'll buy a house. I'll get a little more space, a little more control. You know, when you think of apartments in a big city, you've got how many people are touching the door going in, mm -hmm. touching the elevator to go up, those kind of things. Maybe that's the reason that people are saying, okay, I'll just go ahead and buy something. 
that I have control of, sure. and then we'll worry about it. You know, we'll sell it in a couple of years, maybe move up or, or do something like that. Okay. Um, buyers are showing love to the suburbs. The uh, percentage of homes, 57% of the people um, moved into the suburbs versus 50% of the people prior to, so a 7% increase. Yeah, they, they want more space. They want to, they want more to be space. away. Absolutely. I mean, it, because of the bigger towns, the bigger cities, that's where a lot of the spread is going through, just yeah. because of, you're, you're around more people. You're, you're exposed to more people, and this does make sense to me because we've definitely seen it. You know, our numbers in our county have reflected that. Right. Our sales volume was great. There were people moving, as far as lake properties, from Indy and Chicago, you know, the major metropolis mm -hmm. were coming here and, and moving into their second homes here yeah. to get away from those bigger cities. Yeah, so sure. um, I guess the, the other thing that I'd like to talk about is that searches have sped up. Buyers are looking faster. They're, and it goes back to our be decisive. If you're ready to buy, buy. Don't just be out looking around. On average, two weeks now, where before the pandemic, it was about three weeks. So it's wow. that, that's significant. That's a third reduction. It doesn't sound like much when you say three weeks versus two weeks, but they're making their decisions faster. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about that and talk about some sellers, about uh, trends among sellers since the pandemic. We're, uh, and when we come back right after this, you're listening to Real Estate in Real Time. Welcome back. You're listening to Real Estate in Real Time. I'm your host, Woody Zimmerman, here with Mark Skabowski of Remax Lakes. And you were just talking about how buyers, they're, they're buying faster because of the pandemic. Yeah, well, I think they realize that, hey, along with, it goes in with the whole market flow, right? Inventory's low. Mm -hmm. You've got to be decisive. You need to be ready. Don't wait if that's the house for you. If it meets a majority of your criteria, buy that house. Okay. So what pre-pandemic was three weeks, okay. roughly, which yeah. doesn't seem like a long time, but three weeks down to two weeks, that's a third. So they've yeah. cut a third of that look time. Um, as far as the number of homes that they view, pre-pandemic it was about nine. Post-pandemic it's eight. I would have thought that would be less because my personal experience is I'm not showing if somebody's truly motivated to buy, mm -hmm. we're not looking at 20 houses. No. You know, we're going, number one, because there's not many out there to see. Mm -hmm. We're looking at three, four, five, and they're, they're making a purchase decision and moving. Yeah. Um, so we were ahead of the national statistic when it comes to that locally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and maybe some of those... Some of those houses are more on Zoom or whatever, right. virtual virtual right. showings. Right. Okay. Uh, what about sellers? So sellers reflect our local, definitely reflects that. As we talked about just before the break, they are looking to upsize. Mm -hmm. They're moving from a smaller home to a bigger home for whatever reason. Um, you know, as we've talked about in our local market, four bedroom homes are definitely at a premium. So people are going from that three two, which has been the industry norm forever yeah. locally as well, to where they want a four bedroom home, four bedroom or larger home, a mm -hmm. um, little bit more space, larger yards. All of those things are being reflective. Um, why are they doing that? Because their current home is too small. Mm -hmm. You know, as we're seeing schools shutting down and things and kids are at home, parents are having to stay home again. You know, here in the fall, we're, we're dealing with it again. Um, you need more space. Mm -hmm. So is this going to continue? Who knows? Um, you know, we've got vaccines out now. I think there's going to be some uh, relief when it comes to that. Maybe yeah. we'll get to some sense of normalcy at some point, whatever the new normal is. But, you know, and I just read an article this past week, and Dr. Fauci said it's probably going to be somewhere between April and July where things start to feel normal again. Yeah, well, I sure hope so. I, I, I'd hope that would hit January, but I, we're right too. now in the flu season. I know. Uh, who knows? You I don't know if we'll get there or not. But, right. you know, sellers are looking to upsize, and they're feeling urgent. Why are they feeling urgent? Well, because I think we're, we've crested the wave as far as price appreciation goes. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think that they're afraid, hey, maybe I'm missing out. 
maybe I'm not going to be able to take that equity out. You know, I talked to somebody this week that their uh, son had bought a house and paid like 130000 for it two years ago. Okay. And homes in his neighborhood were now selling for 165, 170, and he'd done nothing to it. So why would he not sell and mm -hmm. take advantage of that equity? Yeah. You know, that, that price appreciation. Mm -hmm. Take it while you can get it. And he, this kid was in a fortunate position. His parents had an apartment over their, their garage that okay. he could move into, which uh -huh. that's always the challenge is where am I gonna go? Right. But so sellers are thinking, hey, I need to upsize a little bit, but also why not take advantage of the market? You know, and I, I've talked to numerous sellers that are doing that. Why are you selling? Well, why not take advantage of the market? I may as well take advantage of that uh, price. So it's those equity gains that sellers have, have made in this near term, this, this you know, pre-pandemic, during the pandemic, the last three years, yeah. prices have gone up. They don't want to miss the wave. They yeah. don't want to miss out on uh, taking advantage of, you know, the possible profit, equity mm -hmm. gain that they could could take yeah um, so you know along with that some folks just want to live closer to their family members okay they want to get closer to family what is that what's leading to that well you need a support network mm -hmm. right during this I mean I know you know my own situation my uh, dog my grandson they had COVID in the daycare uh, okay. two-year-old right? right but there's one they had COVID in the daycare so he had to quarantine I can't remember if it was 10 days or 14 days. Yeah. But, you know, as a parent, now fortunately, you know, I'm an old guy. I've got grandkids, right? I'm not dealing with that every day. Right. But parents that are working, how do you take care of that? Mm -hmm. Well, my daughter relied on family. You know, my son-in-law's family is here in the Warsaw area. We're here in the Warsaw area. Yeah. So we stepped in and helped. Right. I, I can only imagine if you were in an area where you didn't have a support network, mm -hmm. where you didn't have family, how you going to take care of that? Oh, yeah. That, that would be tough. And so, yeah, you want to be around family. And, you know, living in a pandemic like this, I mean, you know, it's never in any, any of our lifetimes. We've never right. experienced anything like, like this. And it makes you think. And you, and you do revert back to family. Right. Well, and, you know, I think we, we've seen that move. People have, uh, you know, I'm from Michigan originally. I, we moved here in 2000. We moved away from family. Well, then my mom mm -hmm. and my wife's mom moved here to get closer, you right. know. And, and, and it, it's a comfort for us now with them being more elderly. Uh, my mom will shoot me for that. But <laughs> for, them, for them getting a little bit older, yeah. you know, to be close, to take care of stuff, you yeah. know. So, and I can see that from a parent. If, you know, kids, same deal, school shuts down, grandma and grandpa are going to have to step in and help. Or somewhere, you need that support network. So I think that that is probably, that trend is going to continue, which goes against the trend where people are just going, hey, wherever the jobs are, mm -hmm. with Zoom, with technology, you don't necessarily have to be in that geographic location. You can work remotely now. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that trend is going to continue. I think we're going to see that carry on. All right, very good. So if you're thinking about it, it could be a good time to make a move. And so uh, so if you have questions though for Mark, uh, Mark, please give out your contact information. Sure. Websites, lakes-realtors.com. can email me at markskabowski at remax.net. Our phone number is 574-834-1233. All right, very good. Good information. You've been listening to Real Estate in Real Time. Have yourself a wonderful weekend.